Hey everyone, welcome to another Coral Island video. So Coral Island is a reimagined farm sim game. So as that sentence suggests, farming is going to be a big aspect in the game. Today we're going to be going everything that's been announced for Coral Island in terms of farming. We have a lot to go over, so maybe pause the video right now, go grab a snack, go grab a drink, and then resume the video. So let's start with farming. Farming is part of the gameplay that involves the player with the crop. The player can exchange the goods harvested from the crops with money. The players can increase their farming skills by regularly spending time on farming related activities. Example of those farming related activities are plowing the ground, planting seeds, watering plants. So these are things that you're probably going to wake up and these are going to be the first things you do before you go up to Starlight Town or go mining just to get it out of the way. At least that's what I would do. Now, you might be asking, what are you going to use to farm? Well, what kind of tools are you going to have? So tools are items that allow players to do activities and tasks around the island. The player can carry around tools by storing them in their inventory, and it'll show up in their inventory bar if you want it to. Players can upgrade their tools by leaving them in the Sanchez Brothers blacksmiths and waiting for several days. Each upgrade requires different upgrade materials that consist of bars. There are different levels for upgrades for tools. The higher the update level, the fewer energy players will need to use for them. And if you don't know, energy is required to carry out activities on the island. Energy reduces when the player does various tasks such as farming, fishing, combat, scavenging, and diving. Once the player runs out of energy, the game will bring the player back home the next day. There are several ways to increase the energy. The player can eat consumable items such as food and raw food ingredients. The players can also level up to reduce the energy used. And you can also sleep uh, to the next day and that will fully restore your energy. If you still don't understand that and you want something a little bit more relatable, a lot of games have stamina. So stamina will reduce when you're doing uh, hard activities like fighting or mining or farming. So when the stamina reduces, you're not gonna be able to do anything once it hits zero. So you're gonna have to go sleep or you're gonna have to go eat. So a lot of games have this, they call it the energy bar. A lot of games will say stamina. So back to tools, uh, one of the tools you'll be able to use is a hoe. Hoe is mainly used for farming or scavenging in mines. Players can create more than one tile when they have upgraded their hoes. You also have an axe. An axe is used to chop down trees and stumps. It is necessary to upgrade the axe to chop down larger stumps and hardwoods. So the starter axe will only be used to chop down normal trees and small logs. Then you have the pickaxe, which is personally my favorite tool, which you could just break stones down. And you'll, when you go mining, you'll use this a lot. You also have a scythe. The scythe is a tool to cut grass, and it'll cut grass in one tile ranges. You, the player, will also have a watering can to water crops. It is not necessary to water crops when it rains. Players can refill a watering can from any body of water nearby. Once upgraded, it can hold more water and water more tiles. We also have the fishing pole, which is necessary to catch fish. Players can use the fishing pole on any body of water. There is a skill that allows the player to throw more bait than one tile. There's also a milk pail, which is used to milk from cows or goats, and there's shears to trim wool from sheep. Crops are seasonal, which means they only grow during a specific season. However, some crops can be planted in multiple seasons and be reharvested every several days. Here I will show you a, an image that's been on the Coral Island Kickstarter. I'm not going to know every single, because I don't want to get something completely wrong. So I'm going to name off the ones that I do know. So there is potatoes, strawberry, radish, carrots, peppers, bamboo, cauliflower, cucumber, corn, eggplant, cactus, daisies, sunflowers, star fruits, pineapples, watermelon and wheat so i missed about seven crops here so if you guys do know any of the crops that i did miss go ahead and put them in the comments because i really do want to know what they are next we got fruit trees fruit trees take 28 days to mature and will not wither off season they bear one fruit a day every day for the season and will continue to bear fruit every year the fruit trees we know right now that are confirmed are mango fruit trees, durian, and apple trees. There are many more to come, but these are so far the only confirmed ones that we know of. Now we have fruit plants. Fruit plants take 11 days to mature. They are bi-seasonal, able to grow two seasons out of the year, and will wither off in the off-season. 
They do not need to be watered after maturity. Some of the fruit plants are going to be avocados, bananas, dragon fruits. There's uh, a lot more to come. These are, again, the only confirmed ones that we know of as of right now. These will probably be my favorite trees because you don't need to upkeep them. Next, we got the shipping bin. The shipping bin is the medium that allows the player to sell items from the farm. It is located next to the player's house. The player will be able to see it as they are heading down to Starlet Town. The items are placed into the shipping bin and will be sold at the end of the day. It is possible for the player to take back the items that they put in the shipping bin as long as it's still within the same day. Now, I don't want to make a lot of comparisons to other games. Obviously, this isn't the first farming sim game ever. So they are going to take stuff from other farm games and kind of maybe improve on them. Now, with this shipping bin, it does remind me of Stardew Valley because there's an exact same thing where, uh, let's say you go fishing, you catch some fish, and you want to sell it. So you can either go ahead and go to the market and uh, or the fish, the fish guy and sell the fish to him, or you can take it to the shipping bin, drop it off there, and then when you sleep and wake up the next day, you'll get some money off of it farm animals now this could be a video all by itself but i'll briefly go over it right now because it is big a big part of farming in the game farm animals provide players with resources that can be processed into artisan goods and sold directly all farm animals require players to build a farm building to house them such as a coop or barn before the purchase of the actual farm animals farm animals can be purchased at the ranch some general mechanics of the farm animals is that all animals have hearts just like NPCs. Increasing hearts can be done by petting them and some other interactions specific to each animal. Other confirmed interactions include milking and shearing. Inspecting an animal once after interactions are complete will show an animal's age, mood, and a number of hearts. There's a max of 5 hearts. So far, the confirmed coop animals are going to be chicken, ducks, peafowls, and quail, and the confirmed barn animals are cows, goats, llamas, luwaks, and pigs. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. Farming is not the thing that I'm most excited about Coral Island. I'm, I'm more excited about things like diving, mining, fighting the monsters. Uh, farming is a little bit down the list. However, things like farm animals and pets are things that are going to make me want to farm a lot because if you look at these pictures for these barn animals and these coop animals they look awesome and there's some videos on them that i'll show too and the graphics look amazing the way they look is amazing and i'm excited to get my own farm going of animals i, I think i'm going to be more invested into the farm animals than i might be into the crops or the trees then there's pets and mythical pets and there are type of animal companions that are separate from standard farm animals so let's talk about that. Pets are creatures that provide companionship for the player on their farm. The player can choose their pet preference at the beginning of Coral Island during the character customization. Choices include dog, cat, monkey, lizard, fox, or rabbit. The player will be given one pet at the beginning of Coral Island and it is gifted by the player's first friend. Pets will not be available in the Kickstarter's backer demo, which is the alpha version that comes out in June of 2021. Pets are distinct from farm animals which provide animal products. Now don't worry, pets can be petted, and mythical pets are a special variety of pet that can be earned late in the game in addition to the standard pet that was given at the start of the game. Mythical pets include exotic animals and mythical creatures. If you didn't know, backers of the previous Kickstarter campaign had the opportunity to pledge towards the special mythical pets that are no longer available outside of that campaign. Of the mythical pets, the only currently known is a dragon, which color is yet to be decided. The key given to the campaign backers will give a mythical pet to the farmer at an earlier stage of the game, unlike other variants of mythical pets which are believed to appear late in the game. What I did is I pre-ordered the game on the Kickstarter, I bought the $30 version, which uh, basically just gave access to the alpha release, which was in June of 2021. However, when the game went into Backer Kid, which uh, once the Kickstarter ended, they moved on to Backer Kid until the end of March. And I did end up upgrading my tier to get the Mythical Pet, which I am so excited about. Now, if you look at the picture of the Mythical Pet that you get as a Kickstarter backer, it looks awesome. I love the colors. I love the way it looks. I just, I can't wait to see it actually in the game. 
Let's talk about artesian goods. Artesian goods are items that are produced using artesian equipment. Each artesian piece of equipment produces different goods with different qualities, depending on the quality of the ingredients. Artesian goods are produced in a span of a few hours to days. One example of an artesian good is a bee house, a hotel for bees that collects honey. You place it near a bed of flowers for flower honey. Now obviously this isn't going to be the only artesian good in the game, this is just the only one that's uh, so far that's been announced and that we know information on. So there's probably going to be, I don't know, close to 100 I would think, maybe close to 50 artesian goods that you'll be able to make, but this is just one of them. Now let's talk about a big part of the game, which is the farmhouse. The farmhouse is where the player starts the game. It has several facilities to cover the basic necessities of the player. Some of the basic features of the house are a bed. The player uses it at the end of the day and continue to the next day. It also automatically saves the game. The bed can be moved anywhere within the house, but it can never be removed as it is a core function to the game. Then there's a TV. The TV gives the player several helpful information about the day, such as weather forecasts. The weather channel informs the player of the forecast for the next day. It is always 100% accurate. The TV also shows today's luck. The luck channel informs the player of their current luck value. This is especially helpful when the player needs to go to a certain area that increases the chance of getting better item due to luck. So I'm excited to figure out what today's luck channel is more about it seems like a thing that i've never really seen in a game before and i'm excited to check it out now let's talk about customizing interior decorations every piece of furniture inside the farmhouse can be changed and customized except the bed to do that the player must press the button to enter decor mode once it's in decor mode the player can pick up furniture which picks up existing furniture to move they can move furniture which moves the furniture within the house they can rotate furniture, so rotate the direction of the furniture. There are only four directions, north, east, south, and west. You can place furniture once happy. You can place the furniture in the desired location. You can also put furniture in your backpack and store it in your inventory. You must have an empty slot in your backpack, however. And, of course, you can also take things from your backpack and put it into your house. This decor mode reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing. When COVID hit back in March of 2020, uh, this game came out like right around that time and I ended up getting it and I was super into it for a few months and uh, decorating the house was definitely one of my favorite things and this reminds me a lot of that. So I hope they can take a lot of things from Animal Crossing and relate it into their game. So while you can decorate the inside of your house, you can customize the exterior of your house as well. The customizable areas of the exterior of the house are the house style, so change walls and windows of your house. You can change the roof style, which changes the style of the roof of your house. And you can also change the porch, which just changes the style of the porch of your house. So you can also upgrade the house. Extra features can be unlocked by upgrading the house. The details of the upgrades are still in progress. To upgrade the house, you need to purchase the upgrade at the carpenter. It will take a few days for the upgrade to happen. You can still use the house as normal during the upgrade. So there's a lot of things you can do to your house to make it as homey as you want. And every house it looks like is gonna be completely different just by the amount of items and uh, designs that they have. I hope the developers will take time into putting a little bit more work into more furniture, more designs, more exterior designs especially, so maybe you can put furniture outside of your house instead of inside. In some of the videos, it does look like the player has stairs, so you will be, when you upgrade the house, you will have a second story that you'll be able to decorate as well. So everyone, this is everything farming related on Coral Island. Let me know if I missed anything because there is a lot of information here. So if I missed anything, put in the comments below. I'll definitely look at it. And if need be, I can make another video in the future when the game actually comes out and more information is released on it. Also, in the comments below, put down what your favorite farming aspect is. For me, it's going to be building the coops and farms so I can collect all the farm animals. But anyway, thanks for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.